review for chapter 17, Electric Fields. If you are doing the 2022 syllabus, chapter 17 is no longer in AS, it will be in A2. So if you are resetting the paper, or if you are watching this, don't know when, this one is for the 2011 year. 2011. What year am I? 2021, 16. All right. So electric fields for AS, the specific focus, right? The, you have two types of things that you need to know. Number one, you should know how to interpret the electric field drawings. G generally, they have not really asked uh, you to sketch this in paper two anymore because there are a lot of other things to ask you in paper two. Okay, so normally this is uh, in paper one. And it's one MCQ, la, okay? So don't be too fret, don't fret too much about this. Okay, number two is a special case where we look at uniform electric field. Uniform electric field means the electric field is always the same. And this uniform electric field uh, will happen or happens when you have the case of parallel plates. Okay, so what kind of parallel plates are we talking about? So I'm just going to put the parallel plate here, okay? So this is your parallel plate. And generally speaking, on your parallel plate, right, here is your, if you want to draw the electric field lines, you notice that the separation is uniform, okay? So number one, if this is a uniform field, the separation between the E field lines are uniform. So there were several past year questions where they asked you to sketch these blue color lines. Just make sure that the gap between them are uniform, so they are evenly spaced to show that the strength of the field is even. The only part where it's not even is at the top part and the bottom part, which we normally just ignore. Okay, so you can just stick to drawing the parallel lines. Okay. And number two, if you want to draw the lines, it will go from high potential to low potential. Sometimes the high potential can be positive. Sometimes the low potential can be negative or zero. But it can also be 200 to 100. All right. So this is an example. Okay. So normally what we'll do is we'll probably connect this to a battery lah, like that long. Then the battery here is delta V. Important equations. Number one. To find how strong the electric field is, so the value of E is electric field strength. Electric field strength. To represent electric field strength, E is defined as force per unit positive charge. So your E is equal to F over Q. Or F is equal to QE. Whichever format you want. Uh. When defining what electric field strength is, you must mention the word positive because it's not just force per unit, any charge. Okay. So positive charge is our reference charge is what we always refer to when we try to describe electric field. But how do we describe electric field again? Whenever you see the word field, it is always a region of space. Region of space. Where a charge experiences a force. So please don't confuse the definition of electric field strength, how strong the field is versus electric field, which is just a general term of, oh, there's electric field around Miss Lee's microphone. So a region of space around here got electric field. Okay, that's the first one. And the second one is sometimes we need to calculate electric field strength uh, using the dimensions of the plate. So another equation for E is equal to V over D. So this V is the potential difference between the plate, delta V, and D is the plate separation as drawn here in the diagram. Okay, so please note that this one is for parallel plates only. When you do A2, 
you cannot use this equation unless got parallel plate. You do A2 is KQQ over R squared. KQ over R squared. Okay, so this one is only for parallel plate. Please check the question. And uniform fields. Parallel plate. Uniform field. Okay. So that's it. Um, the other equation uh, concerns itself with energy. Okay, so I want to take a tangent. I know I haven't discussed any kinematics or review any kinematics chapter yet, but that is because I think you have started mechanics in maths. So if you started mechanics in maths, then you begin to see that actually all the mechanics in physics is easy. The harder part in mechanics maybe the explain explain stuff lah, but the calculation is is kind of straightforward, right? I look at your mechanics in maths paper, it looks a bit complicated, you know. So anyway, whenever we have this force, uh, if you are a learner of physics, you should immediately think, hmm, if force hall can Newton second law and got acceleration. And then you will show us thing. Hmm, got acceleration or confirm got kinematics. Uh. Hi, yo. Need to use, I don't know how to spell kinematics already. Kinematics. Need to use your Stuva equation, your STUVA, your V square, U square, 2AS, S is UT, half AT square. We can go this route. Whenever you see force, uh, what else happened? Uh? Think about your mechanics chapter. Oh, or miss, I remember, after we learn force, oh, then we learn equilibrium, are correct? So we can think about equilibrium, which is your net force is balanced or your net force is zero. Maybe you suspend an oil drop in between the plate, oh, the electric force and the weight cancel out. Okay, scenario number three. Force can cause turning effect, correct? So it can be, can create a torque where F is equal, I mean, torque is equal to force times perpendicular distance. Okay. So when you think about all this, whenever you see force, right, immediately you have to understand we have opened up an entire dimension of questions. Of course, we can just stick to electric field and then not combine it with other chapters. But why not, man? Collaboration is best. So the fourth one, force can accelerate things. Force can help something stay in equilibrium. Force can rotate things. Force can also do work. So there is always some form of change in energy. Okay, so when we talk about this change in energy, we will concern ourselves with electric potential energy, which is the third and final equation, which is work done by or on the electric field. Okay. Let me zoom in a bit. So if you if you learn your A2 chapters properly, then this part is actually very straightforward. But if you let's say haven't learned A2 yet, okay, never mind, never mind. I try to give you a shortcut, but it's a bit of memory work. Lah. To find work done, we take QV. Okay. Specifically Q delta V. So if let's say you bring a charge Q from this plate or the edge of this plate here, positive Q, uh, and then you bring it all over to the, the other side of the plate here, another positive Q. So this is um, you know, something like work done to bring a positive charge from, point, from plate A to plate B. So then I would take the potential difference from A to B. Okay, I have derived this equation using uh, work done is force times distance. La. You can find this in your notes. But if now you don't want, then you just memorize. No? Okay, and this is also especially helpful because if I look at potential difference between A, B, V, A, B is defined as work done per unit charge. Wow, miss, this work done per unit charge feels like something that we will use in circuit, correct? No? That's why potential difference is known as work done per unit charge. From the perspective of a parallel plate is, we are converting some energy to another energy. La. So whenever there's work done, there's energy conversion. That's why I rather think about it in terms of change in energy. Let's say if I take a positive charge and move it from A to B, 
that work done is actually converting kinetic energy to potential energy. Because right now, oh, you know, kinetic to potential? No, potential to kinetic. Okay, how do I know? Uh? Um, because I look at the direction of the force. Okay, let, me, let me draw. Draw, draw, draw. I need a different eraser. I need a different eraser. Hello? Uh, this is the problem. When your cursor is too big. But if your cursor is small, student cannot see. Okay. Anyway. Sorry about that tangent. Let's say you move a positive charge from A to B. So the quick and easy way is to draw the direction of force. Direction of force on a positive charge must be in the same direction as the electric field line. Okay, so this is the same direction as your AB because you are traveling from A to B. This is, your dis this is the distance traveled. So your F and S is parallel, right? That means your positive, the electric field will help a will help you push the positive charge from A to B. Electric field is going to help you move the charge from A to B. So in this case, it is work done by the electric field. So if electric field does the work, you are converting electric potential energy to kinetic energy. The particle is going to accelerate. Quite logical, right? Your particle will whee, accelerate. Because the force is pulling in direction. Ma. Okay. If you switch it, and if let's say now you have your positive Q moving from B to A, now you want to bring another positive charge and you want to pull it here. This positive charge is like, hey bro, I'm very happy on this negative plate. Why you want me to go there? So it's work done on the field. So maybe the positive charge already has a certain initial velocity and it will be forced to decelerate. So Ke to electric potential energy or you need to exert an external force. And this is, this is a point in time where I need to tell you that sometimes instead of doing positive charge, they can include a negative charge. So if let's say I have a negative charge here, this negative charge will experience a force opposite in direction of the field line. So the direction of force for positive charge is the same direction as electric field. This blue color line is electric field. Direction of force of the negative charge is opposite direction to the direction of the electric field. This one is uh, quite basic. La. Or you use logic, no? negative charge attracted to positive plate. Ma. So right now, if let's say your negative charge is moving from plate A to plate B, like this all, this is work done by the electric field. The electric field will pull the negative charge for you. You don't have to do anything. So electric potential energy convert to Ke. That means your electric potential energy would decrease. Okay? If this one pull it back in the opposite direction, then you just flip. Lo. This one will be kinetic energy convert to electric potential energy. Electric potential energy increases. So these are normally asked in objective, but can ask in structure also. La. And this is the part that can be a bit tricky. So if it's tricky for you, go do some questions. All right. So at this point in time, when I've mentioned positive and negative charge, you will see another universe open to you, which is your particle physics. I can combine this with uh, particle physics. So if let's say you, I guess if you not do chemistry, so maybe you don't know that, you know, for example, alpha particle is 4 to helium. Beta particle is 0, negative 1 electron. Okay? So think about the charge and think about the mass. This charge will be positive 2E. This charge is negative 1E. This a bit. This one is 4U. This is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Lah. Miss, 
how do I know what is u? Uh, you can find in the table of constants. Okay, so familiarize a bit with the table of constants. Like e and u can find from table. Table in front, page two and page three. Okay. So this is uh, the part that you need to know. And because, right, of this uh, parallel plate being able to combine with so many other different ideas, it is frequently asked together with other ideas because I can kill two chapters in one question. So why not? All right. So I think this is actually a pretty important con connecting chapter. Objective in total. Okay, let me I, let me try to phrase this. Objective in total for this one. Maybe MCQ you get about two questions lah. That is the max. But structure on its own will probably ask together with these kind of things. Of course, you can also ask MCQ with these kind of things. Uh, but this one is normally probably about, I think you can look at it in the ballpark of about 7 marks. So this whole chapter is 10 marks, 10-ish, uh, okay, uh, 130. But if you don't know, let's say you cannot do this, or uh, you cannot find all this, uh, then why? Why? That's so sad. All right, so that, that is electric field, and I included this just, just to show you uh, the field drawing. We're going to jump into some past year questions, okay? Uh, there are a few comments that I'm going to address now in the chat. Number one, um, whenever you use this equation, we are using the potential difference divided by the plate separation, okay? So whether you, you write V over D or del V over del D, that one don't care. The delta is to remind me to minus two numbers. Because I am the kind of student that will see this one as 400 and then put 400 without seeing that this one is actually 100. Then I go back and set low because my answer is wrong. Are you that kind of student? Because I am that kind of student. That's why I write the delta V to remind myself, hey, hello, this is delta. Please check and figure out whether you need to minus something else or not. This is my personal failsafe. Okay? Just like whenever I write this equation, if you notice the way I do things, this one I always put net force because, again, I will accidentally leave out one of the forces, which is very common. So it's to remind myself, okay, when I write the equation, go and check and double check and make sure that all the relevant forces are properly labeled. So how you write your working is important to help you not make careless mistakes. That is, that is what I do. Lah. If you're like, I don't make careless mistakes, then okay. No? All right. So... Next, we're going to try some question. Here we have two parallel metal plates. This is from ON 12 paper 1, 2. Okay. And the two plates are moved towards each other. Wow. We bring the plates closer. Okay. So we are moving this plate like this. Uh, closing the gap. Okay. And point P is midway between two plates. So when you think about E is equal to V over D and you bring this thing closer, so um, later this plate and this plate will be like this and then it will be even closer. So we're going to go from this to this. Okay, so this is what they mean by move towards each other. And if you think about the plate separation D, your D is decreasing. Right, so if you think about E is V over D, D decreases. If D decreases, then V how? Ah? I mean, V is constant because it's connected to the battery. It's V constant. So your electric field strength will actually increase. It will increase when D decreases. Okay, so this T... What is T? Oh, this is time. Mm, time. So we move them towards each other. And as time passes, as time passes, D decreases. D decreases as T increases. That means your E would increase. So this is out. This is out. Now you have this and this. Does it increase with decreasing rate? or decrease with increasing rate. You think about this, I, uh, I guess we can substitute la, if you want to. 
we do velocity is distance over time, correct? Or you don't want to think about distance over time, you can... It's not really plate separation, it's just distance. Okay, so this velocity is constant. The distance will decrease with time, linearly, 1, 1. Or rather, in other words, distance is proportional to time. If distance is proportional to time, then I can say E is proportional to 1 over the plate separation, and there'll be some form where E is inversely proportional to 1 over T. So because it's inversely proportional, you get an inverse relationship. When your T increases, less and less, the change is more and more. Because it's an inverse relationship. Ma. Your inverse graph, 1 over. So because of that 1 over, your answer will be D. Okay? So always think about uh, what is proportional. And especially in A-levels, there are a lot of graphs where they keep changing the axis one. Go flip through your topicals. Find all the graph and do them. They are very tricky one. They can give E, T, R, V, D, R, E, D, R, all this law. So to decide whether it's increasing or decreasing gradient, decide whether E and D is directly or inversely proportional because you expect the gap to decrease uniformly. So if the gap is decreasing uniformly, a uniform decrease because from here you are decreasing, let's say from 1 to 2. Okay, 1 to 2 is not a lot. But then as time passes, the number is bigger, then the drop, then the increase is more. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to just move on a bit. Okay, so diagram shows the electric field near a point charge and two electrons X and Y. Which row describe the forces acting on X and on Y? Okay, so the direction of force have to follow the direction of field line. And direction, and X is electron. So electron will go opposite direction but parallel to field line. So this is Fe, opposite direction. This is also Fe, meaning this is a positive charge. La. But the electric force on Y would be less because Y is further away. So magnitude of force on X fx is bigger than fy because x is closer to the point charge. Okay, so x is closer, so x is more force, more force, yeah, wrong, wrong, okay, and it has to be radially inwards because it's negative charge, ma. it's attracted to the positive, okay, so either you look at the pattern and you know it's positive or look at your fe, Fe for negative charge is going against the direction. Okay. Next, 32. A uniform electric field is represented by five horizontal field lines. So to know which direction to draw your field lines, right? If let's say they want you to identify the plates, you will have one plate here and then the other plate here. Okay. So we always go from high potential to low potential, positive to negative. When calculating electric field strength and you use this equation, this one is magnitude only. Don't itchy hand, go take the small number, divide by the, no, take a small number minus the big number. Miss, then when to put negative, uh, negative is for direction. You yourself should be able to draw the direction even if I don't give you any values because the direction should be from high potential to low potential. This is for magnitude only. Plus minus is for direction, which is related to vector. So you decide where you want positive to be. Normally it's to the right, but it's really up to you. Okay? So your delta V, if you <laughs> if you itchy hand and have negative numbers, then then omit the negative number because the equation is only for you to calculate magnitude. For vectors, if you want to consider direction, you have to use the understanding of your field strength. You should go from high potential to low potential. All right. Okay. Next. Uh, 
which statement must be correct. Okay, so when they say the field is uniform, it means that this entire shaded area, the field is the same or no change. It's a bit like gravity. Gravity is a uniform field. In AS, all the fields you study is uniform. Meaning to say, if I drop a basketball in my house and I drop a basketball in MCKL basketball court and I drop a basketball on KLCC and I drop a basketball uh, inside the Clang Valley, it's the valley, they all have acceleration of 9.81 because we are all considered very close to the Earth's surface, uniform field. Okay? So the acceleration cannot be increasing. The acceleration of particle, the acceleration of particle, particle between P and Q is increasing. No, it is constant. How do you know it's constant? It's a uniform field. All right. B, kinetic energy of the particle at P is the same as the kinetic energy of particle at Q. I got no information about the particle. I have not, I, I got nothing. They are not, they didn't tell me where they're stationary. They didn't tell me uh, what is going on. But it says that it causes a positively charged particle to move from P to Q. Okay, so I have positive charge here. I'm going to move it from P to Q. Sure. How do I know which kinetic energy is the same? I mean, the kinetic energy can never be the same because when you move from here to here, think about the direction of the electric force. Electric force is going to attract the positive particle towards the negative plate or the direction of Fe will follow the direction of electric field line. So this particle is going to accelerate. V is increasing. So kinetic energy cannot be the same. Ke at P will be less than Ke at Q. Okay. Force of the particle Q is greater than a cannot la. Because why? Constant field ma. Constant electric field, F equal QE. So F is also constant. Okay, we are done to the last one. Work is done on the particle as it moves from P to Q. Yes, work is done by this FE. This FE is the one that is doing the work. So work is done on the particle by the electric field as it moves from P to Q, D. Okay, so these quest these kind of questions are very um, conceptual. Sorry, I can't find the word. All right, so there's a question that asks if Ke increases because we expect the force to pull the charge from P to Q, so the charge particle will move faster. What energy decreases? That energy is potential energy because work done by electric field. This means electric potential energy decreases. Work done by Adam. So ener Adam's energy decreases. No? Can? If you work done by the electric field, the electric field will lose energy. Okay. That is this objective question. I think from Fat March 19, paper 1, 2. So you generally expect what 2 to 3 MCQ that looks like this. Generally very conceptual. Okay, so please know how to read the field line. This is a uniform field. Okay, this is a non-uniform field. So X is closer to the positive charge. That's why the force of X is greater than the force on Y. Okay. All right. So that's it for the objective. Did I explain something wrongly? Acceleration is constant. Acceleration constant, the velocity still increase, okay? Constant acceleration doesn't mean no, doesn't mean velocity is constant. In fact, constant acceleration tells you that velocity cannot be constant. Okay? So please do not confuse acceleration and velocity. If you are confused with that, please immediately go watch the kinematics videos. Okay, so the acceleration graph of this uh, parallel plates will look like this. Your A graph, let's say I draw time, uh, time in second, acceleration in meter per second is constant. But the velocity, hang on, meter per second square, meter per second 
will be like this. So let's say this is P, this is Q. I don't know lah whether P start from stationary or not. They didn't tell me. So this is time. Okay. Let's say this is T1. You reach Q at T1. Reach Q at T1. Okay. So constant acceleration doesn't mean that the velocity, in fact, it tells me already velocity confirmed will change. Please don't confuse these two things. Read the statements very carefully. Or like I would quote Miss Ellie, please ready your brain. Acceleration, kinetic energy, force, work done. These things, sometimes we use interchangeably when we think about things and we were not careful. And if when we are not careful, we get confused. Okay. So acceleration, kinetic energy, force, velocity, work done, electric potential energy, they are all very different things. And electric field is when we can, at one fell swoop, uh, test out all the weaknesses in students' concepts. Okay, so whenever you see a conceptual question with sentences, uh, you got a you got a big brain time. It is big brain time. All right. If the acceleration is increasing, then this one is a curve law. I will leave that to kinematics. Lah. All right, next. This one. Okay, why did I choose this? Oh, because this is the equilibrium question. Okay, so for this, it says that this uh, oil drop of mass M, if it's oil drop right, then we do not ignore weight. So there's an issue about weight in... In this kind of question where most of the time the student is like, Miss, why we don't why we don't consider mg? Mg normally, right, for charged particles is negligible because normally we will put something like a proton or an electron or even a helium nucleus. The weight is normally negligible. So weight is mg for things like proton, uh, electron, uh, is negligible. If they want you to consider weight, they will use a symbol M. So a charged oil drop of mass M with N excess electrons is held stationary between two plates in a uniform magnetic field. Held stationary here means equilibrium. Equilibrium here means net force is zero. Okay. So the voltage between the plate is V, the plate separation is D, the elementary charge is E, and the acceleration of free fall is G. What is the value of N? Good question. We have to start with net force as zero. Solving a physics question always start from concept. Okay, so if you want net force to be zero, prerequisite for you to use any kind of force equation, whether it's F equal to MA or F net is zero, is to draw and label all the forces acting on your particle. Of course, this particle is pretty straightforward. It has weight, which is mg, and then it has electric field, which is electric force, which is Fe. So from here, I can just take Fe minus mg to be zero, and Fe is equal to mg. Okay. Normally, when it comes to proving questions like this, first order of business, figure out who you need to substitute. I don't need to substitute M. I don't need to substitute G. So I'm going to leave MG there. What I need to substitute is FE. So FE here will be equal to QE. And this one is MG. And then I look at all my answers. Don't have electric field. Hiya. We need to substitute electric field. How do you find electric field? Electric field strength is equal to V, which is the potential difference, divide by D, which is the plate separation, okay? But I also noticed, right, not only there is no E, there is also no Q. Mana ada Q, don't have, right? If we don't have Q, then we need to substitute Q. What's the total charge? Uh, we have N excess electron. N excess electron means Q is equal to N E. One excess electron is the charge of one electron. 1 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulomb. Two excess electron is 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19. 10 excess electron is 10 times 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19. So N excess electron is NE. We are supposed to keep E as E. So I'm just going to write this one as NE. No. No, 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 no. Okay, can I substitute that off? Let's put everything inside. N E V over D equal M G. What do we want? Uh? 
end ah, okay and okay time to do rearranging it's a bit like Marie Kondo you know you look at uh you look at the term and go like Q does it spark joy no it's not in my answer it doesn't spark joy E does it spark joy no it doesn't spark joy because it's not in the answer so find a way to substitute them okay so this one will be mg times d divided by ev or that be your hotel hopefully <laughs> okay so whenever they ask you a proof question whichever chapter that they can ask you and normally is in objective one look at the options that is given to you and try to substitute away all the things that you don't see inside start with an idea okay start with an idea then try to slowly substitute away if let's say you totally don't know how to start or or you reach here qe equal mg and then you you are stuck you can start but then you get stuck circle the question number and come back again okay there will be some proving question i just don't know which chapter all right come to look at some paper two all right this one is may june 19 paper two three because we have kinematics right okay so there are a few types of kinematics that i will not do but i suggest you go and try this one from major 19 paper 2 3 your sand particle is going to be accelerated like this is going to move in this direction okay because uh why uh, um, number one the electric force is going to attract the particle in this direction that means why don't the particle move horizontally only sand particle it is not a charged particle it is sand confirm there is mg so the resultant of these two forces fe and mg will pull the particle in a straight line in this direction all right so try out this question so this one will go this way and then you do that do okay so normally describe the pattern of electric field lines between the plate this one instead of asking you to draw they ask you to describe oftentimes students <laughs> prefer drawing of course la who doesn't prefer drawing describing is You know what to describe, right? You get parallel lines, parallel lines that are evenly or equal distance, evenly separated. Okay. So here is how you can write your answers. You can say that eight horizontal lines. Okay. So normally I would just say it will point from zero from the 9 kilovolt or 900 volt plate to the 0 volt plate and these lines are equally spaced or the line separation is the same you draw also can uh. but you need to mention not just horizontal straight lines uh. you need to mention direction so whenever you describe pattern always think about talking about the shape this is the shape straight horizontal lines and then talk about the direction from 900 volt plate to zero volt plate and then talk more about the property important property this is uniform field all we care about between parallel plate is uniform so this is the important property to show uniform field All right, so describing pattern, shape, direction, uniform field. So name the two forces acting on the particle as it moves from X to Y. I have drawn the forces. They are weight. If they say two forces, I'll confirm me to think about weight already and electric force. If not, then the only force is electric force. Your list of forces, right? Remember, you, you have a list of forces. Your list of forces are... What's your list of forces again? Tension. Where got tension? It's a, partic it's a sand particle. Good luck tying a string on a sand particle. You have tension, friction. Um, dude, this particle is in vacuum. What friction? What talk you? There's no friction. There's no drag. Friction or drag or air resistance. So don't have. Normal force means normal force. No, this is not touching any surface. So the only thing you have left is weight. Please don't talk about up thrust again. Vacuum, no up thrust. You displace what or it's a sand particle some more. What up thrust you have? So these are all the list of forces that is possible besides electric force. Lah. 
So you got these two. All right. By considering the vertical motion of the particle, show that the time taken for the particle to move from x from x to y is 0 0.64 second. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to crop the question again so I don't have to scroll up, scroll down, then I also have a headache. If they ask vertical horizontal component, I go and read this question, I go like, hey, I need to stuva. You are right, we need to use kinematics, uh, equation of kinematics. Okay, so for this one, if you want to move down from x to y and they ask you to use vertical motion, so your vertical displacement is 2. Okay, because you are moving from here to here and this is your sy. Stuva. We have S, we have, we want to find T, I'm going to circle T. Uh, do we have U? Yes. Do we have V? No. Do we have A? Yes. In the vertical direction, A is Mg. Okay. If I draw the forces on the sand particle, we have Mg pulling down. We have Fe in this direction. That's why the resultant is in this direction. Okay, so I'm going to use the equation with no V. S is UT plus half AT square. Okay, well, how do I know U? Well, it says here that your negatively charged sand particle is released from rest at point X. Okay, so they give you the dimension of the plate, la, potential difference of the plate, la, which is the horizontal distance from the top of the positively charged plate, particle travels in a straight line and collides with the positively charged plate at the lowest point y. Okay, okay, can. So we use s is ut plus half at square. Let's choose a direction to be positive. I'm going to choose down to be positive. So this will be 2, positive 2. This is 0. This is half, 9.81 t square. So now I can find my t. Okay, pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so in this case, this one would be 4 divided by 9.81. Okay, let me pack my calculator. Divide by 9.81. Square root. Square root. 0 0.64. 0 0.638, which is 0 0.64 second. Proven. Calculate the horizontal component of the acceleration of the particle. The only horizontal force is Fe. The vertical force is Mg. Okay? So, horizontal component, we can still use Stuva. But your A is no longer G. La. This is vertical. Ma. So, this A is from electric force. So, I will use F is equal to Qe but MA is equal to QE. So from here, A is equal to QE over M. So I got to find A, I got to find the charge. What's the charge of the particle? Go back and read. Negatively charged sand particle. They got give up. Means they never give charge for the particle. I am stuck. Are you? Do you have the charge of the particle? What did they want you to find again? So I've been behind. C, D, yes. So you're like, oh, you don't have charge, then cannot find acceleration, then how? Uh, yeah, you got stuva, what? Okay, so here is like we don't have Q and we also don't really have the mass of the sand. So this one cannot use. Not enough information. Insufficient info, variables, numbers. So we have to try the other one. Do we have the horizontal displacement? Well, yes, we have Sx. 0 0.080. Do we know the time it takes to grow from x to y? Yes. 0 0.64. Do we know the initial speed? Why well, yes, initial speed is 0. Final speed don't have. Oh, use the same equation again. Correct. This equation is also available in front of your question paper. If you forget, S is ut plus half at square. So I'll put 0 0.080 is 0 plus half a 0 0.64 square. 
And if I press my calculator, I will get A as 0 0.39 meter per second square. Okay. Okay. Next, calculate the magnitude of the electric field strength. Well, I can now use this one, right? So I know you can't do So during exam, if you write like that, if let's say you happen to you doing that exam, then you take your pencil or your pen, then just cross out, la, just cross like that. Okay, please don't do this. Sometimes uh, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> don't need to do any of this. Just cross out, then continue. We don't read already one, okay? So you want to find the electric field strength? Obviously, you have two routes. I got, I, I got. You have either... So you might be thinking, Miss, can I now use this, this equation, uh, this F, this... M A equal Q E. Dude, you still don't have Q and M. You haven't found Q and M yet. In fact, later I think they want you to find and determine the ratio of Q over M. Hi. Yeah. So then we got another option. We can use E is equal to V over D. Potential difference is 900 to 0. So I can just put 900. Plate separation is 0 0.12. So 900 divided by 0 0.12 is 7.5 times 10 to the power of 3. I prefer writing it in standard form in case I got transfer error where I've forgotten to write an at zero. You can write 7500. Yeah. Okay. Use all your answers to find the ratio of Q over M. Finally, we can use this one. F equal MA, which is also equal to QE. So A over E is equal to Q over M. Now, before you get too happy, remember that this acceleration is due to electric force. So electric force was in the horizontal direction. So horizontal acceleration, not the vertical one. So it's not 9.81. Uh. We've got the horizontal acceleration here, 0 0.39. We have the electric force, 7.5 times 10 to the power of 3. This is equal to Q over M. So 0 0.39 divided by 7.5 times 10 to the power of 3 is Q over M. Q over M will now be 5.2 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Coulomb per kilogram. I think in maths, well, maths in chemistry, we call this what? Specific charge. Uh? Specific charge, right? Ratio of Q over M. All right. Now we're going to put a different sand particle inside because we want to analyze the sand, you know, silicon. Okay, another particle has a smaller magnitude of the ratio of Q over M than the sand particle. Oh, okay. So this Q over M number two is less than Q over M number one, the initial one. Okay, and we are still releasing it from point X. When I see release, I know that the initial speed is zero. Okay. So for the movement of this particle, state the effect, if any, on the decreased magnitude of ratio on the vertical and horizontal component of the acceleration. Okay, I like vertical because you know why? Vertical is our friend, the gravity, you know. This is your sand particle. You have mg here. So the vertical component acceleration is g. Okay. Horizontal component is Fe. This, this Fe is equal to Qe. So of course, this will affect stuff lah, because you're going to put Ma here is equal to Qe. Right? So A is equal to Q over M times E. Means this one only equal Ma, me ala, equal Ma for you lah. Here, Ma is equal to Mg because this is weight ma. Can cut this one off. So A equal to G, 9.81. So this one got no change. Constant. No effect. Very nice. You cannot change gravity unless you change the mass of the earth. And how would you do that unless you have a superpower? Okay. But what can happen when you change the ratio of Q over M? When Q over M decrease, so this one decrease, and E is constant because it is inside the same parallel plate. 
and you didn't change the potential difference. So E is constant. So because of this, A will decrease long. So A decreases or becomes smaller. Okay, because it is from A is equal to Q over M times E. E is constant. This one decrease. One constant, one decrease, the net effect is decrease. Okay, so in this question, we didn't uh, dwell too much in projectiles because of the way the particle is released. If the mass of the particle, maybe we put a proton or a helium here, then this particle or this alpha particle will travel with force like this. So if you ignore mg, if mg is negligible, then the particle will just travel this way. This one is when the mass negligible. Okay, then the only force is Fe. You read the question now, mass negligible is normally something like alpha particle, uh, proton, uh, something like that, uh, hadron. Uh, okay, mass not negligible are things like oil drop, sand particle, okay, things that are very obvious. Lah. Or basically, you know that there are two forces, so the other one has to be weight, because what other options are do you have? No more. Okay. So yeah, so that's it for electric field. Uh, another one that they can ask you is this, where instead of releasing the particle, I let the particle enter at a certain speed in this direction. Of course, you may be asking, then miss this one, no gravity. Ah. Um, <laughs> you look at the mass. The mass is pitiful. But in case you want to know whether there's gravity or not, I can calculate for you. Lah. This is mass, right? So you think about the particle x. Your particle x is here. Let's say you want to find mg. So you're going to take 5.9 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times 9.81. So it's going to be something something times 10 to the power of negative 5. About 60, I estimate. Lah, okay. What about Fe? Because Fe is the one that's attracting it upwards. If you want to think about Fe, we will have to use Qe, which is Qv over D. Okay. So let me move there so I got a bit of space. Do we have the charge? Yes. Negative 4.2 times 10 to the power negative 9. Already very big now. Do we have the potential difference? Yes. 1.2 times 10 to the power of 3. Do we have the plate separation? Why yes. 1.8 plus 1.8, 3.6. 3.6 cm times 10 to the power of negative 2. You calculate this number. Normally, I just check the prefix. I can tell whether can ignore or don't ignore. Miss it negative sign. No need. La. We just want magnitude only. So I'm going to remove the negative sign. Okay, Or omit the negative sign. 4.2 times 10 to the power of negative 9 times 1.2 times 10 to the power of 3. Da, 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 da. Negative 2. This number is 1.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4. This number here is 5.7, 5.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. If you want to find net force, let's say you take the upward force, 1.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4, minus 5.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5, I take 2SF, okay? Standard CIE practice to only take 2SF. 5.8 times 10 power negative 5. This is 8.2. So you want to know whether can omit or not? Do something like this. And then you decide, oh, is this close to this? No, ah, because it's not big. Ah. Did I press calculator wrongly? Let me check. Ah. It's not beyond me to speed run and then just totally copy the charge wrongly, press the calculator wrongly. Okay, can. 
So you also will have certain hints that there's another force in play because there's a resultant vertical force. Uh, <laughs> if they say resultant, means that there's probably, you can suss that there are more than one force. Okay, and then they also have fully mentioned electric and gravitational fields. Read the question for hints. The question will tell you in different ways that, hey, in this question, you cannot ignore mass. In some questions, you can ignore mass. So you want to find the time taken, the distance taken. These are all stuva, okay, S-T-U-V-A. I have started this one already, resultant vertical force. I have, in fact, I've already calculated the resultant vertical force. I uh, just copy this whole thing uh, down there. <laughs> hmm. So I got net force, which is this one. Then I can just and my net force is equal to ma. So 8.2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 is equal to mass of the particle, 5.9 times 10 to the power of negative 6 a. You find your a. Mm -hmm. E negative 5 divided by negative 6. So acceleration is 13.89. 13.90, 98, which is close enough to 14.0 meter per second. So after this, uh, this is all STUVA. Because in fact, they ask you to calculate the magnitude of magnetic force. Ooh, so this one, how nice, right? If you can do this in the real exam, <laughs> less things to cancel. This is FE. But then I calculate the magnitude of magnetic force. I found the acceleration. Beautiful. You want to find the time taken for it to move from X to Y. Move from X to Y. We can take the vertical stuvala. Okay. Quick recap on projectiles. X component. Y component. This one is UX. 0 0.75. UY is 0. V, we don't know. Really don't know one. Most of the time, we don't know V for projectile, unless they want you to find. Okay. Horizontal displacement is P. Vertical displacement is 1.8 cm because we traveled from X to Y. Okay. Like that. And C. Yeah. Okay. Then what else? What else? Do we have time? Nada. No time. Hashtag 2020 and 2021 students, no time. Acceleration, huh? Vertical acceleration, so horizontal is zero. Vertical was 14. They want you to find T, and after you find T, they ask you to find P. So to find T, we will use the Y component, okay? Find the time T, ma. So Y component, I don't have V. S is ut plus half a t square. So 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 2 is 0 plus half 14 t square. Okay, just FYI. Wait, uh, negative plate. Negative charge. Yeah, negative charge attracted to the top plate. Wow. Nearly, oh, I can think of a way to trap my students, Liao. I tell you lah, because I'm not going to trap you anymore, right? You're about to see for your paper. So a way to trap students is, we are so used to MG pointing downward and FE pointing upward, then they cancel off, so students were minus. I know Liao, next time I'm going to put FE and MG same direction. Haha, <laughs> I changed this charge from negative to positive. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to keep this for 21, 2021 trial paper when I set them. Don't know when I'm going to set them, but I'll be setting some paper soon. Now. So uh, indirectly, what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes 
MG and FE can be same direction. Uh, please go and stare at it properly. Make sure you see all oh, negative attracted to positive plate. So this one is still correct. For a while, I was like doubting myself. <laughs> Brief dissonance. Does that happen to you in exam? You do halfway, you feel very confident, then sudden feeling of GG. <laughs> oh no! Does the FE point upwards? Then you go and stare at the question. Then like, Oh yeah, it does. Why did I doubt myself? 0 0.051 second. You cannot check answer. Ah, yeah. Cannot check answer. Yeah. You're very used to do pass here, then immediately check answer to confirm in your brain. I cannot. So you really need to try to finish everything without checking the answers first and see if you can proceed. All right, S component. S is equal to UT again, plus half AT square. But this one is zero. Very nice. So this is the distance P. Okay, P is in the X component. We have 0 0.75 and we just need to multiply by the time. 0 0.75 times 0 0.051. So, 0.75 times 0 0.051. Should be in, I mean, this thing is 0 0.038 meter, which is 3.8 cm. Okay, so this is the x component. A question from the chat is velocity, velocity of the particle in the horizontal direction is constant because there is no horizontal acceleration. Zero acceleration, velocity, no change. Okay. Velocity in the vertical direction is not constant. You find if one you can find, no? V is U plus AT. When you can find out, but the question didn't ask me to find marks. So what for? I want to find no marks also. No marks and can't help me get marks. So I'm not going to find. So you always think about it from the perspective of like, what is the question trying to test you or what do they want you to see? So what I could do is I could always... Uh, change the direction of force to trick you. In the chat, someone mentioned change the potential difference. Uh, yeah, la, they can ask you to, uh, the plates are brought closer together, further apart. State and explain <laughs> if P increase or decrease. I don't know. Hmm. Like for example, if I increase the potential difference, okay, I can say if V increase, what happens to P? Does P increase or P decrease? All right, I, I type. Where do I type? I got no place to type. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna later on. I'll import the the questions in la. But give me a sec. Okay, I didn't load the questions. It'll be ugly, but it'll be it'll be okay. Okay, so my state and explain question for this without. Uh, bringing in too much of a headache is if this 12 times 10 to the power of 3 volt increases state and explain changes if any in P so maybe I put 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3 2 times 10 to the power of 3, what happens? Okay, so your first point will be when the potential difference between the plate increases, the electric field strength increases or becomes stronger. Electric field strength increases. Because of this, vertical acceleration increases more than 14. If you accelerate faster, right, you will less time needed to travel your 1.8 cm. If less time is needed because you're accelerating upwards faster, then what will happen is P decreases. You can trace back in your calculation one. So I trace in your calculation now. Huh? When V is small, Fe is, no, when V is increased, ah, yeah. when this V increase, this Fe become bigger. This Fe become bigger, 1.4 become bigger, net force become bigger. Net force become bigger, acceleration is bigger. Acceleration is bigger, go back here. 
Stadis. Acceleration is more than 14. Time is shorter. Because you divide by something bigger than 14. Ma. When time is shorter, this 0 0.051 is shorter, then this P is less. Lo. So P decreases. Or a lot of it for me is just instinct. La. You can either trace back your calculation or you just tell yourself, feel stronger. Ma. The upward pull is more. If upward pull is more, you imagine now you, you are running like that. I want to get to the end. Ah, but there's a force pulling you in this direction. No. If the force is even bigger, then the distance that you can cover will be less. So I already know P will decrease one. I just need to know how to explain. So normally the mark scheme will give this one three marks one now. You mentioned when you mentioned your Fe increases is B1. You mentioned the acceleration increases, so less time needed. This one is B1, and then your P decrease is B1. Understandable, ma. You accelerate upwards with a larger acceleration, so there will be less time. Okay, so that's it for electric field. I will stop recording now. Before that, uh, that's all. Uh, they normally will combine with kinematics. So make sure you do enough questions. And the objective ones can be just electric field. All right.